What's up guys? Welcome back to another video and in this tutorial I'm going to talk to you guys about something called bound services. Now the services that we created in the last couple tutorials they were great and all but if you guys ever try to have any level of communication between your app and that service it may have caused some issues. So in this tutorial what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you guys about bound services and it allows us to communicate with the service a little bit better than the old ones. So the first thing I did is I started a brand new project and I didn't do anything weird I just chose blank activity so again we got one Java file one design pretty boring and what I want this app to do of course I I need the user to do something and then it makes some service happen so all my service is gonna do is it's gonna get the time so pretty dumb but it's a pretty simple example of how this is all gonna work so let me delete this text view right here and instead draw a large one so you guys can see it better and this of course is eventually going to display the time whenever the user clicks a button and we'll give them this button right here so just so we can be clear on what's going on this button they can click and we'll say like what's the time so they click that and it'll display the time so we really don't need to change this text at all however what I would like to do is change the IDs of these alright so the ID of text view could be Bucky's text and the button ID could be Bucky's button and the last thing I want to do is of course whenever they do click this we want something to happen so we need to go down to the on click and what can we call this let's just call it show time so again we're gonna have to build this method in a little bit but eventually they're gonna click it and it's called and it's gonna call some service and the service is going to display the time on the screen right there so pretty sweet so let's go ahead and make that service now that we got our very basic interface set up so of course you guys already know how to do this if you go down to your main package and right click and choose new service service just the plain one and we can just keep the default name why the heck not and finish it up so this is what we get by default okay okay pretty sweet but now we have to figure out how do we make this binder thing whatever the heck that is how do we make this app the ability to to connect with a service let me just rearrange this and I messed everything up alright so there we go so the first thing I want to do is we need to create a new object and this object is going to re be responsible essentially for connecting whatever the app is called it's called the client and the service is just called the service so we want to bind the client to the service so that's the technical term so we need first an object that's going to do this now if you actually we need to import some stuff first alright so import android.os binder and of course we need to import all the stuff to make us um, to give us access to change the time so that is just java.text dot simple date format import java.util dot date and import java.util dot local or locale whatever alright so now that we got all of our stuff that we're going to use imported we can first create an object that's going to be the binder object so again this is kind of like the bridge that's going to connect your app to your service or your client to your service so I'm gonna go private final it's an iBinder object I'm just gonna name my Bucky's binder and we're gonna set it equal to new my local binder now this as you notice is gonna give us an error because this is a class that we didn't create yet now I'm gonna mention this right now the way that you bind a client to a service 
It's kind of weird how Android makes you set it up, but I promise by the end of this video you're gonna understand it. However, when I'm trying to talk through it, it's a weird little process and uh, it kind of involves an extra step that you may think, okay, what's the point of that? And I think it too, it's just the way that Android makes you do it. All right, so again, this is the object that's gonna be responsible for the bridge, the bind between your client and your service. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create this class. So let me show line numbers and give myself a little more space. And we'll create it right at the bottom here. So public class, my, let me just copy that. My local binder extends binder right there. So the first rule is whenever you want to bind a client to a service, you need to make an object that extends the binder class. And this says, hey, this class is going to be capable of binding two things together. Now the only thing we want this class to be capable of doing is returning a reference to this. It's pretty much super class because whenever we have access to that, we can use all the methods that are in here. So if you go to my service or whatever you named your service whenever you started and make a method called get service. Now all this method is going to do, and this is the only method that's going to be in the class, is it's going to return my service this. So again, essentially what it boils down to is whenever we want to bind a client to a service, we need to create a new class that has the ability to bind. Now the only thing this class is going to do is it's going to return a reference to this class and then we can use this stuff inside here. So pretty simple enough. Again, it's kind of weird that you have to like make something to get inside what you were already just at, but you know, that's how it works. Now the one last thing that we need to do is for this on bind, if I can select everything, what this method is going to do if you delete all of this, it's just going to return Bucky's binder. All right, so let's step back and see what's going on. Eventually, this is our client, this is our main activity, it's going to try to bind to this service. Now whenever this activity binds to this service, it goes inside here and it looks for a method called onBind. So this is what you want me to do whenever I'm trying to bind. Well, what is what instructions are you giving me? Return Bucky's binder. So what Bucky's binder is, is just an instance of this class right here. And this class gives you access or returns a reference to my service, pretty much allowing you to access anything inside here. So again, we're going to go here and then we're going to go here and then here and then we can <laughs> access the stuff inside the class and I know it's stupid but uh, that's how Android makes it work and most of the time people just um, they just like copy this and paste it but you know you're already like one step ahead of everyone else because they really most people to be honest they don't even know how it works but now we know how it works behind the scenes and uh, well we're on our way to becoming a pro Android developer now one other method I'm gonna put in this class of course the service has to do something right I mean now that we got access and did all the hard work it's gonna be a waste of time if it doesn't do anything so remember I said that the main point of the service is just to get the current time so this is finally the easy part so public string I'll just name it get current time And all this is going to do, and if you ever watch my uh, like normal Java tutorials, you're going to understand all this. So new, simple date format. And how do you want to display the time? Well, it's just display it like a clock. The hour in, fr in front, then the minutes, then the seconds. You can actually have dates in here like months, years, days, but I just wanted to display um, time really simple. And... I'm going to set mine to the United States because I am in the United States right now. And of course, we need to return it. So return the date format, df, not dtf, and the format is just a date object. So again, 
we're pretty much just returning a date object and then we're saying okay this is how I want you to format it with the hours minutes and seconds so again this is actually the easy part and eventually whenever we bind to this service we're gonna be able to call get current time and it's gonna give us the current time so now that we got all the hard stuff out of the way the next tutorial finishing everything up writing the code in here binding to the service is actually gonna be pretty easy to understand